My name is Kenny Bazwaya. We are one-on-one -on -one with Enugu's governorship candidate, Dr. Chidi Kedet Uwanyang. Sir, can you please just quickly introduce yourself again? My name is Dr. Chidi Kedet Uwanyang. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an architect by training. I am a um, minister of the gospel and um, I'm the next governor of Enugu State. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I like the way you say it. Uh, you spoke about uh, how you're going to generate via agriculture and how you're going to bring that. Can you quickly touch base on that? Because okay, we have a, um, a manifesto. We call it the Mega Vision of Enugu State. And it's captured under the letters M E G A. Now, under that Mega Vision, M stands for multiplying agriculture in Enugu State. We're going to embark in a large scale mechanized farming that will generate a lot of jobs for the teeming youth who are jobless in Enugu State. It will also be able to feed the state and will have enough food to export to the outside world. It will also become a catalyst for the economy of Enugu State because apart from jobs, being provided, we're gonna have companies coming in. We're gonna have um, we're gonna build warehouses. There's so much that's going to happen. Under E, we're going to enhance the economy of Enugu State. Do you know that at Nine Mile Corner, people pass Enugu to go to shopping on each other, even all the way to Benin. People, I know you're not going to like that. <laughs> people also pass Nine Mile to go and shop in Port Harcourt and Namba. Then we're going to build a mega market. So that will cut off that revenue that should be going to Enugu State. So when we stop that revenue, people will come to shop in Enugu. When they come to shop, they need a place to sleep. Hotels are going to spring up from there. The international airport there, we're going to focus on the cargo wing. We're going to make it an economic tax-free zone so that people will come from Monich and Lagos and buy things from wow. importers there. Because wow. once you import your thing, wow. you sell it right there. So that will rejuvenate the economy of Enugu State. We're not going to depend on, on the government. You know, Also, on that G, we're going to guarantee free medi free health care for every citizen of Enugu State. You'll get treated Ooh, in the government hospital. How are you Exactly, that's what I'm telling you. We have done research, we have research, we have data, we know it is possible. We're just waiting to hit now, the ground. One good thing is that I know you've, you've picked um, a, a deputy yeah. governor already. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why a lady and why her? You know, my dear brother, I'm very gender sensitive. I'm married to a wife who has shown me that women can do much more than what men can do i had a mother who was also a very strong woman so i'm very gender sensitive i know that a lot of women have not been given a chance to show what they can do and i know that if we can tap into the resources and the skills that women have we would do very well so i looked for somebody who first of all i looked for i, I had to have a woman so that we can bring women into our government and also in line with AAC's uh, uh, agenda manifesto that they're going to make their their cabinet 50 percent women also i wanted somebody who is educated she has a uh, she's a graduate of university of nigeria and she's also self-employed if you notice i've not been talking about depending on the government i want somebody who has been able to build business right from scratch and she's self-employed she's not a civil servant so she falls perfectly into the kind of person that I know would do well as a deputy governor of Enugu State. And now, her name is Gloria Esema. Yeah, I saw uh, the publication yeah. and uh, I thought it was a good move. Yeah. Uh, personally, yeah. I mean, everything I say here is my own personal opinion. I'm attached to my opinion. Exactly. Um, exactly. At the end of this show, I will let you know who I'm endorsing. Okay. But at this point, I'm not endorsing anybody who's still yes. talking, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, the point here is that when I saw the publication, I saw the woman, I never knew about her before, yeah. but I researched after I saw the publication, I get to know uh, a little bit about yeah. her. Yeah. I I think um, she's been in business for yeah. a while now. Exactly. And those are some of the experienced people, experienced people that you need around. Yeah, exactly. But my question when it comes to her is this. Yeah. How can you so well protect her and you know protect her and believe in her that your government cannot be infiltrated through her 
infiltrated in what manner? Well, we have seen government come to the office with good intentions and midterm or halfway gone, they change their attention, everything changed. They become oh. for you and for you and for nobody and for somebody and then my wife in the other room, exactly. every other thing will pop up. That's why my brother, I don't consider myself as a professional politician. If I was to go into, that's why I'm not in PDP or APC. That is the reason why their governments change is because of the platform they are running on. You now, with all your good intentions, if you go and run under APC and PDP, they will call you, they will put you for a chair, tell you what's in day. So when you win, you have to work yes. according to the rules. Yes. Exactly. So because she is from a platform that does not depend on godfathers or money bags, when she wins, when she wins with me, she's going to do what her mind directs her to do. Because there will be nobody for us to go and report to. We are only reporting to the citizenry. It's Kenny Bazwaye here. I'm 101 with the Enugu State Governorship candidate, Dr. Chidi Kedet Mwanyang. I'm sorry if I don't pronounce it right. No, you do. I happen to know him for a long time. I have worked for him while he was the president of Nigeria Canadian Association. He brought me in to promote and uh, also support uh, uh, Nigeria Independent, I believe, it was two, three yes, years yes, ago, yes. which was a success. I'm, gra I'm glad that you deem it wise to have me on board on that mm. committee. Mm. And it was a very great uh, success. So I have working experience with him, and he's also my friend. But that's not what I'm here to say now. I'm here to speak your mind. Mm. I'm here to ask the question you would have asked if you were sitting here. Yeah. So, sir, yeah. introduce yourself again to our people that are just joining us, in case, for those that don't know you. Okay, like you already said, my name is Dr. Chidi Khaled Mwanyamu. I consider, I consider myself an entrepreneur and um, a community service oriented person. I try to serve humanity through whatever God has blessed me with, my skills, my talent, my education, whatever. That's just why I see myself. Thank you very much. If you're just joining us, we did a recap. We talked about agriculture. He's running for Enugu State. He spoke about uh, the, the deputy, how reliable she is, how he's going to bring the job to the people, how he's going to use agriculture to support the people, how they are going to just rely on themselves, not relying on funding from the uh, federal government or so. I mean, he did not say that he doesn't want funding. He's saying that he will also prefer to be a self-sufficient even though they may be funded or not. So I'm just doing a recap now. Where I was was the question I was asking. Mm -hmm. Every day people go to bed with empty stomach. Yes. Here they are comforted with 5,000 Naira yeah. to sell their vote. Yeah. They have to eat. Yes. They, if they are not alive, they will not be able to cast the vote. Yes. And you are not giving them money to vote for you. Exactly. How do you intend to make this happen? See... That's a very good question, and, and in reality, that is one of the issues that we confronted in our campaign back home. Now, but what we have done to the people is that we have managed to expose them to the truth. The choice is for them to make, and the only place they will make that choice is in the ballot box. We don't have money to share. That is a fact. It is also a fact that the people who are sharing money to them got that money through ways that are not right. It is also a fact that the money that they're sharing to you is your own money. What we have come to understand is that the reason why people from their village died in the accidents that happened last month is because of the pothole is on the road to their village and the bus driver entered that pothole and then he some assaulted and then so rest in peace and then 20 people died. were injured 20 people died because of that road and then the 15 people that were injured were rushed to the hospital when they got to the hospital there was no light they tried to own the generator there was no generator there was no blood bank because there's no refrigerator. There is no light to perform operation. Why did all that happen? Because the contractor who was supposed to build the road was not supervised because bribe 
was given and he didn't do the road. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that corruption is at the root of all of these things. And it is the politicians who kept back that money that was supposed to build used to build the road, who kept back the money for the generator, who kept back the money that was supposed to be used to equip the hospital, who kept back the money that was supposed to be used to buy a refrigerator for the blood to save those lives. They are the reason why all your village people died. Now, they saved that money for politics and they now came back to you to give you back that money. In peanuts. And when they're giving you back that money, the blood of your citizens that died are crying out to you and saying that money you're collecting is my blood. So the choice is for you to make. Either you're going to eat that money because you're hungry or you're going to get angry over your children that died. Yeah, but even at that, some of, someone will argue yeah. that you can take the money and you don't vote. Now, what I'm collecting, what I'm gathering, yeah. that they even give you the money after you cast the vote. Okay. They don't even give you an upfront now. They have to monitor and see if you actually vote or you vote for before. So how so, do you tackle so, this apart from this explanation? No. My brother, it has to come to that. It is something of the mind. Look, we are a people who have a soul and a body. If we have sold our soul, if we have sold our conscience, if we can no longer reason again, because that is what differentiates us from human beings. But the politicians are trying to make it all about money. If somebody cannot be brought back where you can appeal to their conscience, then... There's no hope for them anymore. One thing I must say, I know a lot of people, we do about 40,000, 45,000 listeners on the radio. Yeah. We just started our web TV now. We don't have a lot, but mm. I mean, we're doing the numbers are all double yeah, yeah. there too. Yeah. We want to thank our listeners, our viewers, share, 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 wherever you are. But yeah. one thing I want to say here, the message that you guys have, yeah. the, the platform itself is good. I don't know how given the poverty, the abject poverty in that yeah. land, yeah. how that message can cut through to the marrow of the bone. Because what you're saying just now looks like he's speaking to the soul of an individual. That's for those that still have souls. I was watching a video, and I didn't get to watch it to do it. He said, retry money everywhere. Yes. A lot of souls are gone. I think it was from your own platform yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when a nation is on that level, in my opinion, the soul is being sold. How do you revive that? Let me, let me ask you a question, my brother. If I had all the money in the world, would you advise me to play this game based on their own, their own rules? They are sharing money. Should we go and look for money to also begin to share to people? Is okay, it I'm going to answer you the way I feel it, right? I think what uh, AAC is doing is great. I think the best way to do it is this. I think people got to be educated, which AAC is doing. I don't know if people are ready to take the message for now. I can attest to that. But I also believe that um, um, when people by themselves figure things out themselves, they can value it more, value it more. And that's why I believe that what AAC is doing is correct. Now, to answer your question, I would not advise you to spread money and put it because what you're doing is just get a handout. I don't believe in handout. I believe in work hard. Whatever we have got in GBKF and whatever I have achieved, and you are aware of this, yeah. I, we worked for it day and night. Let me tell you the truth. It is all about ideology. In the same Nigeria, we still throw parties. In the same Nigeria, people are still buying cars. People are still using money to do things. People still buy clothes. People are not walking around naked. So, people are still able to gather their money together and do something. But they have been so brainwashed to believe that they must go after that politician and collect money from them. We are trying to tell them that it is better for you to stand your ground. Are you trying to tell me that if a politician keeps your child on one side and keeps money on the other side and is waiting to grab your child and run away and tells you to take that money, even though you're very hungry, that you will not abandon that money and go to save your child? 
You see, I agree with you. I last two weeks, last three weeks to be precise, I interviewed the governor of uh, Ondo State. Yeah. Why I was in this interview interviewing the governor, I asked him yeah. about how the federal government used the police, yeah. the forces to manipulate elections. Yeah. Which he was in denial when I asked him, yeah. and he gave me his explanation. Yeah. As a candidate running yeah. for the same office in a different state now, he is a governor. Yes. When I did the interview, and he's still a governor, I interviewed yeah, yeah, three weeks yeah. ago. Yes. How are you going to tackle that? The fact these rumors, I am not going to say if it's one hundred percent correct or not. Okay. But there are rumors that the federal government are using the forces, the Nigerian armed forces, police, to manipulate the election. When it comes to as it comes to Enugu State, how do you? proactively tackle that well we are tackling that issue on the on our party level on the AAC level as you know AAC is the most sophisticated party in Nigeria we're not going to reveal all our plans but let me tell you this that Zuckerberg the owner of Facebook came down to Lagos to look for people to work with him Microsoft guy came down to Lagos to look for people to work with him, Bill Gates. What am I trying to tell you? Nigeria is very, very bad with information technology. We are bad with, um, what do you call it, um, something intelligence. What we're going to use to checkmate them, to checkmate the federal government this time around, you will not believe it. Let me tell you something, for instance. We were the ones that identified the errors that you had with the with the PVC cards. We were the ones that revealed to INEC that the PVC cards were being sold on Alibaba in China. It is today they wrote a letter thanking us. So we are so many miles ahead of the federal government and we're waiting for them. Anything that they're going, the way that we're going to use to monitor this election, you will not believe it. We're going to have body cams. We're going to have, we're going to have, uh, 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 I don't even want to start talking about it because for everything that we have revealed, they've always gone ahead to try to, you know that already. Yes. So we're not revealing that. So and let me also tell you, the reason why the federal government was able to rig election with the security in, in Oshun, in Ekiti, was because it was one state. They said like 30,000 policemen to one state. When it is 36 states, you think they're going to have 36 and 30,000 states? And also the policemen will have to be in their locations to vote. So I'm going to go hardly to your call now. Yeah. I know that, forgive me if I'm not saying it correct, you are a war child. Yes. You were giving birth to... During the, the Biafra war. During the Biafra war. Yes. And that's not a very good experience. How do I know? It's because I did my research and I have my background. Okay. Thank you. What are you going to say to the movement that is going currently now once you become the governor okay. of Enugu State? Okay. Will you open the door widely yeah. to IPOP or okay. other movement okay. that solely and only promote the agenda of the Igbos? Enugu State is an Igbo state. Why do I say that? It's predominantly Igbo. But you know that Enugu state had been the capital of eastern Nigeria. Enugu state had been the capital of even Midwest Nigeria before. So Enugu state is a place that so many people from all over Nigeria can claim, you know, their residence, yeah. Yeah. you know, in, in quote. So Enugu state has been very, very um, has been home to so many people. We are open to everybody from every part of Nigeria. But when you come to the Igbo agenda, Enugu State has always been in the forefront of defending that agenda. I have always said that Biafra is something that is inborn. You cannot preach Biafra to an Igbo man. I don't agree 100% with the methods with which so many people are using to, you know, strive yeah. strive for for Biafra. But I sympathize with that struggle. It is it is something that is inborn in everybody who is an able person. Now I will open my door to IPOP 
and to everybody else who is agitating for Biafra. Because let me tell you what they're agitating for. They're actually agitating for somebody not to marginalize them. They're agitating for a balance in the distribution of the wealth of Nigeria. They are agitating for fairness and for justice. But like I said, I don't agree with every method they're employing to do that. So I will be open to negotiate with them and work you know, for the interest of um, that region. That is what wow. I can promise you. Wow. I'm going to digress a little bit now as we wind down. I'm going okay. to bring it to a lighter zone now. Okay. The reason why we are here is to disseminate information. And my job is to bring you here to speak to our people at home, to tell them what you're going to do. Yeah. And you're going to clear the air as we are doing right now. Exactly. And I also want to thank you because I know you have been in a lot of platforms. You are not yeah. shy to speak. No. You are not shy to go to anywhere and talk. I really yeah. appreciate that. Yeah. Now, I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. I want to talk about your platform now. Yeah. We know that um, on the federal level, yeah. that the Yorubas will want Buhari to win okay. so that they can continue the tenor, so that when Buhari goes after four years, he can yeah. be yeah. uh, um, uh, the Simba job. Yes. That's my own statistics. Okay. Um, that we push. The Tinibu. Huh? The Tinibu. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. But. That's my own statistics, right? Okay. And that will push the agenda of an Igbo being the president forward. Okay. And we also know that if the federal government have a lot of governance in different states, they are going to use their governor to work for them and win elections. Okay. What do you think? What is your take on this? You see, ABC is not a regional party. ABC is the first time that we are trying to not dwell... ABC, you mean, or APC? AAC, okay, yeah. sorry, is my voice. Yeah. The African Action Congress is a party, it's an ideology based party, and it's a party that is mobilizing the young people of this country. Let me tell you the truth, my brother. The young people of this country are not tribal. How do I know? Listen to the music that they play now. You hear the video when he releases music, he's busy talking about um, uh, uh, a former and uh, uh, what is his girlfriend? Chioma. You know, you hear final rapping. He rap about Yoruba people. You hear uh, a, a dumb man rapping. You talk about an Igbo man. You hear an awesome man talking. Talk about a dumb man. All of these people, they've cut across each other. And they're making it on that level. They don't have problems. So, we are not really interested in all this tribal, uh, this person. Even that is why I'm running for the governor of Enugu State because in Enugu State they believe in zoning their governorship and they believe that right now I should not be running because it is zoned to people from a particular area. But why are we talking about zoning if the system isn't working? So right now we are disrupting the equilibrium. Say that again. <laughs> we are disrupting, disrupting the system. The equilibrium. Exactly. <laughs> we are destabilizing things. We are coming and we are saying we are not relying on your uh, zoning, Yoruba, Igbo, Edo, Efik. You know this Yoruba, Igbo house thing. It always annoys me. Not because even though I'm an Igbo man, but you have to realize that apart from these tribes that quote unquote are the main tribes or the predominant tribes in Nigeria, there are over 250 other tribes. So we should just be done with this thing of always thinking that it's only a particular... Okay, I'm, I'm going to yeah. kind of bring you on the fun side now. Yeah. I know you do music, <laughs> artists. As a governor, when you win, if you win, will you still be singing? <laughs> it's good to know. It would be nice to have an event where the governor is on stage performing. You know? You know, you so know see from that perspective. <laughs> <laughs> you know the first thing they told me? They told me when I applied to contest for governorship, they said, Chidi, and these are experts, experts, professional politicians. Chidi, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to your social media and delete all of those things. They are not, they are not uh, uh, corporate. Yeah, yeah, they are not uh, governatorial. I said, no, 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 no. Then you don't know who I am. I'm not going to delete anything from 
that is my history. That is who I am. I need people to go back and see who I am, to see where I'm coming from. Then you can tell where I am going. So it does not change me. We will still sing. You know, like, like the presidents and governors in America, you see them, they still play the instruments that they play, but they use it to showcase their talent. So I will still sing. I will you still be a minister in the church and do praise and worship. All of these are important. They are talent, they are gift from God. We must keep reaching the people. See, my prayer is that God will use every talent I have to be able to minister to people, to be able to touch people's lives. That's why I told you that leadership is about everything that you have. You're going to bring it on the table. Of course, I have a charity. I'm not going to use the money of the state to run my charity. I'm still going to have to raise my own individual money. So I will still make music and will sell the CD. I will use the money from that music to finance my own personal charity. Is that a good state that will it for me? My, as we round up, my other question I will now fall on diaspora. Okay. We have been talking since and I have not really dwelled on diasporas. Yeah. How... My first question on diaspora. Yeah. How do you want to engage the diasporans? The people from Enugu that live abroad yeah. with your government. Yes. The people that live in Enugu, in the diaspora, they are so, so tired of what is happening in Nigeria and Enugu State in particular. I've talked to them. You, you, the result of the last online election by the diaspora will tell you clearly what is the feeling of the people in the diaspora? So they are willing to work with me. They are working with us right now. They are contributing to the funding of... Um, sorry about my yeah. voice. They are working with us. They are helping us. And so I will say that I'm pleased with them when it comes to now, how working with us. How now are you... What are the strategies that you are using to engage and mobilize the diaspora to support your campaign? Yeah, um, I have a lot of uh, groups online that they belong to and I interact with them on that group and um, it's been a very interesting uh, interaction that we've been experiencing there. Do you have, um, does you personally for the Inugu itself now, I know that Sawari has a GoFundMe account, yeah. we have promoted, supported it and all those things. Yeah. Personally, do you are you allowed to have your own GoFundMe account, or if yes, how do we reach the, well, the account? Well, you know, somebody like uh, Moe Lashore is a very, um, very smart young man. You know, he's run his online online. Uh, <coughs> yes. Excuse me, he's run his online news, newspaper successfully. He did better than a lot of the standard newspapers. And so, when he started to go fund me, he encouraged us to, to start um, the GoFundMe campaign. So, I have a GoFundMe page uh, for, my, for my own campaign. And people can go there and then uh, contribute. Sorry, my voice I is gone. Voice is gone. <laughs> I wish I have the GoFundMe account. Uh, have, uh, give it. We're going to be running up now because I know that. Yeah, we'll post it. Uh, yes, um, somebody give it to me it. and I'll post it on our okay. page on our website. Good, good, too. good, good, good. Look out for the the good for me account we'll mm. definitely post it on our page yeah. it was a honor to have you i am almost drilling you and grilling you and i know you are oh. your voice is going i will tell you so much i know i know finally yes what will you tell people at home people here people that you want to encourage to vote for you people that don't know you that is still standing on the fence yes people that are on the other aisle yeah. people in your in your aisle now yes. what will you say to them and what will you say to gbkfm as a platform yeah i will just um, praise you for what you've done you have not been shy in speaking for uh, standing for the truth uh, unfortunately a lot of media houses back home i don't know what i would say that they've been bought over because they are afraid and sometimes you don't blame them so they are not able to be outspoken like you and so that's one place i really want to appreciate what you do then for those of you who are still on the fence i will ask you to go online and um do a little research about the african action congress do some research about a presidential candidate Omoile Shore. do some research about my person dr chidi see what we have done in the past look at our manifesto 
and then see what we are bringing on board when we come uh, to the Lion Lion House in 2019. Um, that's all I can tell them. Vote with your conscience. Don't vote because of money. And in the past, we told you to take the money and vote. Now I'm not sure anymore because the money they're sharing is ritual money. It's making some of you, even though you don't want to vote for them, you still find yourself voting for them. So please think, uh, reason with your head. Ladies and gentlemen, this is epic. Thank you very much, sir. I want to say a very big thank you for coming you. and uh, deeming it wise to be here, even though I guess all odd, uh, you had your voice is cracked. Yeah. You still made it here, yeah. and you are still able to disseminate information. For those that join us from the beginning, I want to apologize. Uh, it's brought to our notice that some of our platform you weren't hearing. Yeah. It was live on our website, yeah. uh, live on our web TV, but we had issues with Facebook and, and YouTube. People were in the hearing audio, which we were able to fix. But I thank you for your feedback. If not your comments, we wouldn't have maybe known that on time because the audio was live here in the studio. So I want to apologize. I want to thank you for being patient and being kind. Remember, without you, we can't do this. The only reason why we are doing this is because you support us. Support, support. Share, share, share. Tell a friend to tell a friend and tell a friend to tell a friend. Now, let me tell you who I am supporting. I am going to say this first time on the radio <laughs> and on the TV. Um, increase the volume. Increase the volume. Yes, increase the volume. <laughs> um, this is my own support. My own. And I stand as a person, even though I'm the president and CEO of GBK. Drum rolls. Yes, yeah, drum rolls, drum rolls. I officially endorse Dr. Chidi. Okay. <laughs> and I also endorse Thank you so much. AAC. AAC. Take it Take back. Take it back. Take it back. I'll explain Action. to our listeners why I did this. Please Good. don't get offended. We are still friends. We still can follow each other. Whatever political party you are, you have your reasons why you're there, just like I have my reasons. <laughs> I've been privileged to interview Sawere himself. Exactly. I spoke to him himself. Yeah. I know what he stands for. Yeah. I mean, don't agree with 100% what he's doing. Yeah. It's not in my tradition or in my DNA to endorse any political person. Because of the condition of Nigeria today, yeah. I will not shy away from the truth That's but good. to endorse the truth. That's and good. for these reasons, I reserve the singular right to speak as an individual, to speak for myself, good. and I endorse AAC. Thank you so Take much. Back. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Let you. me say this. Let me say this, GPK. Man. And I'm telling this to Nigerian celebrities out there. You're a celebrity in Canada. Bless God. And, and, this is not no, my brother celebrity <laughs> is not to put makeup it's true celebrity, no celebrity is somebody who came here you know how we came here now it's not easy <laughs> you know what odds you had to face but you know how you started and look at where you are now today government officials politicians are seeking you out yeah to have you interview them yeah today you can organize a political debate yeah we did you can organize a the small GBK FM of yesterday. Now you can organize a political event, and politicians will come, mayors will come and talk on you. I mean, it is something for you to look back and know that God has been faithful. Yeah, you. we bless God. So I'm a I'm a celebrity here in Canada. Yes, now of course. <laughs> so, but you have done well. But celebrities back home, that the ordinary people brought them to the position of stardom. Now we buy your record. Now we they click for your Instagram. Now we they make up your uh, uh, Facebook uh, waiting. But when you became a celebrity, now you even they come here with they buy money ticket, ticket to, to go you. watch you. Mm. So now when you don't become celebrity, you no know, one endorse any politician. Don't even endorse anybody self, you no know, one endorse them. The young people, the youths that made you who you are. You don't want to support any candidates. Continue. Uh, you know, on, continue. on that note, I just want to quickly say this. I'm glad that you brought that up. A lot of us celebrities don't know the power that we have. Of course not. We underestimate. And you know what is even funny? Even the few ones that know, they tend to trade it for cash. Okay. They tend to trade it for more power. They tend to, yeah. It's not the way. The only way. I'm, am I going to say so? Or is no. perfect? I don't think so. No. But I know there are some celebrities he stands for. That I kind of align myself with that say it's Even fine. if they don't want to support Shore, support another young person now. 
Why is it that we are the ones that made you a celebrity, but you're willing to go and collect money from the old people that don't even have Instagram account? And they don't even... They, they, don't, they don't support you. They, they don't, don't come you. They don't come to your yeah. show. Yeah. How many 76-year-old 70, people come to the video show? I'm sorry. Um, it just, for, David, just for saying. David, the video is my man. Yeah, just for, I love him too, but just for saying. But I'm know. saying, they are not the ones that go to your shows. They are not the ones that are uh, watching you on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, on Snapchat. So why is it that when it is time for politics, you are not supporting the young people? You have to support the young people. That's what I'm saying. Support Shore. If you don't want to support Shore, support another young person. But don't only, only support the people that will give you money. Then you go and sing jingle for them. And after, we will begin to defend all of you if you don't support us. On this note, I want to say a very big thank you. Thank you to all our support. I just want everybody to know this show is brought to you and sponsored by Simi African Food. There are two African grocery in Canada. It's Afri Simi African Food and the rest. This semi African food is family owned and family run. The customer service is up the roof. It's affordable and it's reliable. It's located at 50 Eddystone, not far from our studio here. Go there and go there and shop. You'll be shocked that if it's not the wife that is there, it is the husband. They run it. And guess what? To make it even better, do not say anything until you are checking out. Once you are at the car, you're checking out, tell them you heard about them from GBKMFM. You will ride there. As we speak, get another 10% discount. Mm. So, guys, check them out. Check them out. They support us. We need to support them. And you all are the reason why we are here. If you don't support us, we will not be here. So, I want to say a very big thank you. Before we go, I would like to leave you guys with that music, that video at home, the Sower song. I kind of like it a lot. Mm. And I think we should all do more. Let us put our hands together to join, to support anybody of our candidate. Say no to the old folks. These young guys can do it. Yeah, we can course, take it man. back. We can do it. If, like he said, if you are not supporting Sore, support somebody. Somebody that is young. If you stand, if you stand for nobody, you will fall for nothing. Exactly. If you stand for nobody, you will fall for nothing. And guess what? If we miss this chance, mm -hmm. we enter one chance. It's not gonna happen. Again, shout out to GBKFM crew, yeah. Barrister Charles, one of my lawyer here that is supporting us. God bless you, sir. Uh, Destiny, the uh, camera crew, shout out to you. Shout out to all the GBKFM crew. By the way, there's an award coming up uh, December 15th. GBKFM is getting an award. I will give you guys more details soon. Thank you. We love you and we love you. I'll leave you on this. Thank you and stay blessed.
break, break. Minister, minister, minister.